Hey guys, this is Anthony. Uh, I wanted to do a uh, video on mounting a master lockbox. This is not a master lockbox. This is a knockoff because uh, I mounted the master lockbox that I had on this wall. This is a picture of uh, when I was done. Um, but this is pretty similar. Um, and I forget what the model number of the master lockbox is. I'll try to put it in the description. But it's the You'll see them all over the place. Uh, this is the one that mounts. Uh, there's also one that hangs off a doorknob, but they're pretty common. So, um, anyway, so I wanted to just do this brain dump while it was fresh in my mind somewhat. I did this a few weeks ago, so I'm kind of going from memory. But um, I will say that th this is actually a better, much better lockbox. Uh, you know, it can't really be decoded. This is like a mini safe um, versus that one, but... Uh, I, you know, I'm mounting this for other people to, to use and we needed to keep it simple. And, uh, what it's guarding was just kind of a utility room. There's not really much of value. So, uh, you know, you gotta pick your, pick your battles and threat models and all that. So, uh, a numeric code was kind of the simpler, better option in this case. But anyway, so this comes with some screws and some anchors, um, I'm pretty sure that this is actually from the master, and I think there were plastic anchors as well. But my research indicated that plastic anchors aren't actually the best. So um, I'll, now you can go crazy with like uh, there's different kind of fasteners for brick or concrete, uh, but the the best middle of the road option uh, seem to be these Tapcons or whatever the this particular version of them was is called Tapper Plus. But anyway. Um, so they come in different sizes. So this is the size that worked best with the holes that I had to work with. Um, I didn't use these, so this is kind of just set aside. Um, but I will link to a couple of videos that were helpful, but none of them really had the full picture. So that's why I wanted to make mine. Um, but yeah, so, uh, just to go through the process, um, so you pick your spot, uh, ideally something is not visible from the road or like that will scream, hey, there's a lockbox here because people might, depending on the property, people might think it's an Airbnb and it's vacant and, you know, prime for breaking into or whatever. So, you know, a somewhat or a semi-concealed location, but wherever you pick, um, you, you want to mount it and you'd like to, you should use a torpedo level, which is a small level. Uh, to get it level. I didn't have that because even though I probably own five of them, uh, I don't know where they are. And um, this is the one that I was able to find because it's huge and much less uh, prone to losing than a small torpedo level. So anyway, so I picked the spot and you get it, you know, you hold the level up and, you know, you use the... Uh, the right uh, one to make sure it's, you know, vertically uh, you know, straight. And, um, anyway, so, uh, then you use a marker to mark your holes. Um, I use these neat little Milwaukee ink saw versions of Sharpies. You could use a Sharpie. It turned out not to matter. There's even a uh, fancier, uh, fine hole thing that, uh, I, I brought with me, but didn't end up needing this Pika ultra fine point thing. But, um, yeah, so, uh, but I didn't need that, um, so that's not necessary, but also recommended by folks, but yeah, uh, folks on our locksmith recommended this Milwaukee, uh, ink saw, so that's what I brought with me, um, and yeah, you mark your holes, so, um, trying to remember now, again, I'm going from memory, this is a few weeks ago, so, um, so let's see. So one mistake that I made. So I made I made a few minor mistakes, but it, it worked out okay in the end. Um, you do need to get the right. Uh, you need a, a drill bit that's made for drilling into concrete or brick. Uh, and this was in the same section as the Tapcon. That I think some I I wanted the Tapcon brand because it comes with the drill bit, but. The ace that I was in didn't have that, but this was conveniently located right next to it, so it must have been there for a reason. Um, so, you know, just just double check the, make sure that you get the right size drill bit for, oh, look, it says use a 316 diamond anchor. So there you go. So, um, 
yeah, so that's what I did. So just make sure that those are the right size. Um, and then let me think. So I believe I drilled all the holes. So I, so at this point, you've marked the four holes or five holes in this case, but I think there were four for the master. Let's count. Yes, there were four. Um, and so, and then you can set it aside. So now you just have the, the wall with the uh, holes marked in black. And I was, I wanted to drill precisely and um, I didn't, um, the mistake that I made uh, was I did not get a, not really a center punch, I guess it's small variations. This is called a pin punch, but whatever. Um, you, you don't really necessarily want the fine point. You want something that's, um, you know, kind of the, the size of, of what you want to drill. So this is what I got. I didn't actually use this. I bought this after the fact because I said I'm probably going to mount another one of these at some point. Um, but I should have gotten this and used a hammer to whack right onto the black um, holes. When I did the hole, I just didn't do a point like I did, you know, I kind of like reached in and did like, you know, the circle, like, you know, and, you know, do the whole, the whole circle as much as I could just so I could see where I was working with. Now, I didn't just pick like a single point and bop and bop and bop, bop, bop. That was not what I did. I, you know, tried to draw each circle completely. Um, and then, you know, next time I do this, I will take this and I will hammer, you know, onto each circle to, because you don't want your drill bit to, to wander, which happened kind of a little bit. Um, so one interesting thing was, so I, what I brought was a, um, a portable, um, uh, what brand do I have? Uh, I forget what, uh, whatever brand of drill I have, uh, which is escaping me right now. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have, uh, Bosch. Yeah. So I brought my Bosch, um, hammer drill and my regular drill. Um, and thought I would be all set, but my hammer drill, which I don't think I have handy, but my hammer drill had that little hex receiving thing, and I didn't realize until I was down there, um, uh, at the place where I was mounting this, that this does not have a little hex receiving, um, thing. Uh, so that was a pain in the ass. Um, and so what I ended up doing was, um, I just used my regular drill cause that's what I had and the, the chuck, you know, the three things came up and, and grabbed it. So I, you know, next time I will bring my corded hammer drill, which for some odd reason I couldn't find, but yeah, I should have brought the corded hammer drill and an extension cord. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm not really doing that much. I can get away with the portable, but I didn't realize the portable had that special hex head for the, I guess, bits that you can buy. Uh, you have to buy special bits for impact drivers. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I didn't realize that. So there's probably a solution here that I'm not aware of. But anyway, it was getting late and I needed to get it done. So uh, I just pressed hard with the regular drill. Um, it wasn't the end of the world. It was There was some swearing, but it worked out okay. There's, there's always some swearing. Um so, okay, so it, so what I should have done was I should have used the pin punch, center punch, whatever it's called, so that my drill bit wouldn't wander. It did wander somewhat. Uh, it worked out okay in the end. I, I wasn't entirely thrilled. I think it was slightly off because of the drill bits wandering. You know, it didn't really stay entirely level. It was acceptable for, for what I did. It was, it was okay. I, I, would, I would give myself a, a B, maybe a B minus. I don't know. Uh, but no, probably a solid B. But anyway, so at this point, so ideally with your hammer drill, um, oh, minor tip. So I think one of the videos that I had, uh, don't just start with the hammer drill, uh, begin your hole with a regular drill uh, and get a little ways in and then switch to the hammer drill. Don't just start right off with the hammer drill. I'm pretty sure that was a tip that I, I heard in one of the videos. So um didn't apply to me since I uh, was not able to use my hammer drill, but that's what I would have done. Um, so you should mark how far you want to go in. Uh, this is, you know, drilling 101, but uh, I think you want to go in slightly longer than the length of your uh, fastener, or in this case, your Tapcon, whatever. Uh, so if you look very faintly, you probably can't see it in the video, but I 
So, so I brought an old roll of tape. I actually thought it to bring, you know, the, the standard drilling 101 is you, you, you get your depth. Um, I know there's a way to do it with the drill too, I found out since. But anyway, the, the, the poor man's thing is uh, you just wrap a piece of painter's tape around the drill bit where you want to stop, and then you go to the point where the, the tape is flapping around just at the surface of what you're drilling into, and, you know, that's great. But I... I uh, opened up a bucket of various forms of tape and the tape that I picked, it was like the oldest one. I don't know why I wanted to use up the old tape. Well, it was so old, it didn't stick. It like flaked off. And so that was some more swearing because I had to pick the old tape. Well, guess what? It was so old, it wasn't really effective. So uh, I used this uh, thing, this um, Sharpie basically, to, I mean, it wasn't a great solution because I was doing a black Sharpie on kind of a dark drill bit, but hey, it, it was good enough, uh, kind of. So uh, anyway, so yeah, you want to make, put, <laughs> ideally, don't do what I did and get bad tape, you know, put your tape or whatever your depth measurement is to go a little bit beyond, I think, I think the thing I said, uh, saw said like a quarter of an inch, but that seems far, but anyway, slightly longer than the screw. Um, so that's how deep you want to go with your holes. Um, okay, so now you do that, and the big tip, or one of the big tips, was you want to, before you screw these Tapcon or whatever things in, you you need to clean out the hole, because there's a lot of dust in there made by the drill bit, um, and as you drill, you might see kind of like little puffs pop out, but you still need to kind of clean it out. Uh, I saw a couple of different options, one, one guy had like a shop vac, uh, that's cool. Um, another was the, it was compressed air and, um, I think I had brought a shop vac, but it was getting late and I was just like, you know, this is not the craziest application. This does not need to be amazing. Like, you know, I want to do a good job, but I don't need to go crazy. So, uh, I ended up just puffing, you know, I just did this. I just, you know, puffed out the, uh, you know, it just blows out the dust. And so, you know, I did a few of those until nothing was, was coming out anymore uh, and felt reasonably good. Uh, so that's another of the tips that I wanted to record for posterity. Um, so at this point you have, uh, in this case, four drilled holes that are drilled slightly longer than the anchors. Um, and of course, before you drilled, you whacked with this thing, the center punch, pinpoint, whatever, so the drill bit wouldn't wander. You start out with the regular drill, go in a little ways, and you can switch to the hammer drill. Um, and now you have four holes that you have cleaned out. So uh, at this point, I think you're pretty good. Uh, of course, when you drill, you want to have eye protection. Uh, drill or whack with the center punch, pin punch, whatever. So that's why I left that here as a reminder to mention that. Um, and let's see. So these top cons are interesting. All right, so now you can um, mount your box. Um, and let's see. So this is interesting that these have, um, flat, uh, heads. So, uh, I did bring a flathead screwdriver, but you don't want to do a flathead screwdriver all the way. So, uh, one thing I did not do that I intended to do, um, which was, you know, I got back home and was like, that was dumb, was I had intended to, uh, do this, uh, and washers, um, and these, I don't even know what washers these were, but whatever, I, I was in the washer aisle, and this is what I found, just to spread the force a little wider, but uh, it turned out I, I didn't need to. I, I guess I was afraid that the head would slip through these holes, which turned out not to really be the case, and it's not the case with this one either, but I, I would have liked to have spread the force out a little more, but whatever, you know, that's the ideal world. So I paid 17 cents each for these four washers and did not use them, and I will save them for the next thing. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so all right. So now you you hold up your thing, you know, line the holes in the lockbox up over the holes that you just drilled. Um, if you're really on top of your game like I was not, you put this through the washer. And then now you need to get it started. And I do recommend getting it started with the uh, flathead screwdriver. But at some point, that's going to get old real fast. Um, rather than using a drill with the flathead, uh, I recommend using the socket wrench. And I forgot, um, I should have, hello, come off. Um, 
All right, so you can see how often I use these. this. Oh, that must go the other way, yeah. Um, so, oh, cool, I just learned something. Uh, all right, so this is a one-fourth. I can't even read that. Craftsman, uh, whatever. Uh, CMMT43493. Anyway, uh, quarter, uh, and... I did check this before I bought it, but this fit perfectly over this head. Um, and so after you start it with the flathead screwdriver just to kind of get it, you know, manually. You're you're manually grinding through, like you're, you're kind of digging these these threads into the holes. So um, it's hard work, but I mean, my research indicated that does provide a pretty good grip. Um, but... Uh, once you get it started, you don't want to go all the way because it does become more and more difficult. So um, that's when you get these. And I, did, I think I had to buy these separately. I think I'm trying to remember. I think I bought this thing and this head separately, but I, I don't know. It's it's actually I kind of forget a little bit. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, uh, so uh, you start with the flathead screwdriver and you then you kind of crank. It is a little bit difficult with this kind of, uh, you can't really see it, but like if you can see on the sides, like the the surfaces kind of like, it's not entirely flat. They, it kind of like, you know, b bows out a little bit, um, but or curves out a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, you, you can get it to work. You can get it all the way down. Um, there are points where when you're using this, um, you know, you have to... Um, yeah, I ended up having it like, I forget which one, but you end up having to kind of like go like in the corner a little bit. Like you can't necessarily go all the way across because this kind of curves out a little bit, but uh, whatever. I and mean, you have enough, you can eventually get it. And, uh, but this, this was a good idea. So, um, and then you just get it all the way down and rinse and repeat all four times. And I think you're good. So uh, that's about it. Um almost 18 full minutes on that relatively simple task. But I guess the key tips are, uh, well, there's a lot of little tips there. But anyway, that's that's the summary. I, I could summarize them again, but uh, I've already gone on for 18 minutes. So uh, I hope that helps someone. And uh, I, when I upload this, I will try to put a link to the couple of videos I found that were helpful. Uh, hopefully I still have them in my bookmarks. And uh, I hope this helps anyone else who has to do the same thing. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.